Welcome to day two of Breakfast with Roth. My name is Bob Babbitt, and you are here in Roth, Germany, for the 30th anniversary of Challenge Roth. We are brought to you by Nitro and Flapjack. Our first guest, Iron Man Hall of Famer, a gentleman who has produced more great television than anybody else on the planet when it comes to endurance sports, Mr. Peter Henning. Peter, it seems like uh, we did this not that long ago. Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen. <laughs> Actually, somebody tweeted yesterday, said, Babbitt, make sure you don't say, uh, you say, gluten-free Morgan. Gluten-free. <laughs> <laughs> so after everything you've done in, in your storied career as, as a storyteller, when you come to a venue like this, where there's 30 years of history and the course itself tells a story, what, what, what is it about this that, that you like? Just the just the stories. Yeah. It's a storied event. You have unbelievable. I mean, just the history of this event, where it is. In yeah. the, excuse me, Ross, but it's in the middle of nowhere. Right. And people come from all over. A town that is tiny most of the year all of a sudden explodes into a major metropolis for right. for about a week and then goes back into its thing. I mean, I think that's as part of the story. The way the town gets into it, the way the residents support the homestays. You're staying at a right. homestay. There's no hotels here where there are, but very 14 few. Fourteen hotel rooms in yeah. Roth. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people have to stay from all over the world. They open up their houses, and you never hear a complaint. You never hear anything. You get off the Audubon, welcome triathletes. It's like they're coming home, even though they've never been here before. Well, and also, I, what I love when we were on the Audubon, there was a sign. It's like, this is triathlon country, yeah. right? Or yeah. triathlon. Yeah. I equate it to the, in the movie Top Gun when Tom Cruise goes into the Fighter Town the USA. Fighter <laughs> Town USA. I mean, That's there true. it is. It's like triathleteville USA or yeah. Germany. It, yeah. it's, it's amazing that they have a historic sign up saying right. triathlon, which is super. So you were also uh, in Atlantic City filming that event, that first time in the U.S. And, you know, for a first-time event, I thought it was, it was really well done. From a television perspective, does it come out well? It was one of the most competitive events I've ever covered. Really? Well, with the, you know, the, the, there was lead changes on the bike, but usually you have that as the, the best, the bikers come out right. and catch the swimmer. And then it stays that way. And then you may have one pass on the run. Well, it went back and forth on the run a couple of times. It yes. was, uh, you know, between Freddie Cronenberg and, and Scott Freddie, DeFilippis. Yeah, Scott DeFilippis, yeah. And, and, and it was made it very interesting for television. The fact you're running on part of American history, the boardwalk. Everybody's heard of the boardwalk. Sure. And uh, it, it was a great day. It was a beautiful day. People were out. The crowds were out. It was, it was, it was also just outside of uh, Atlantic City is a town called Hamilton. Yes. Which is the blueberry, they call themselves the blueberry capital of the world. And they had the blueberry festival going on. So we had our fill of blueberries as well. When you look at uh, uh, people running on the boardwalk, the real, the, one of the things we, we deal with all the time in triathlon and in running is getting people out there to watch endurance athletes do what they do. The nice thing about the boardwalk is you got 20,000 people who just happen to be there who are great to have, you know, for, for a, a televised event, it makes it look big. Yeah, it makes it look a lo very large. And the people, if you watched in the... You can't really notice it when you're looking at TV, but, right. but watching it, during the, people would just, all of a sudden, they'd be walking and somebody would run by them and they'd kind of look, what the heck's that all about? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then gradually, people started staying by one place and watching them go, and then the, then the clapping started, and they realized it was an event. Some of the people came down there to play the slots, other people came down there to go to the ocean, but all of a sudden, they gravitated to where, where the event was. So right, was and that's, that's always, uh, yeah. over, over time, I remember we did the Olympic trials in downtown Honolulu mm -hmm. in 2004. Well, there's a lot of people at the beach mm -hmm. on, a, on, a, you know, a, a, on a summer day, and so you, you all of a sudden, go on, come on, look at all the people out here for triathlon. So that's good stuff. And this event has, over the years, what, 220,000 spectators last yeah, year? I think more than that. I, you know, yeah. I've heard all kinds of numbers. That, uh, the Solar, Solar Hill yeah. or Solarberg, which is, you know, I, I used to do the Tour de France. Right. And it's as closest thing that I've seen to the Tour de France on, on, in triathlon. Right. With the people lining the, the, the climb up Solarberg. And uh, and the crowd, the parting of the waves as the first <laughs> cyclists and motorcycle go up yeah, the yeah. hill. It's just like coming over an alpine stage in the in the tour, and it's the same enthusiasm, the cheering, the horns blowing, the the 
it's it, it's it's, it's great TV. It's great spectator stuff. Well, as a guy who produces, but also you're on the back of a motorcycle for a lot of that stuff. Yeah. How scary is that being on the back of a motorcycle shooting when you're coming you're coming up those those roads that are filled with people. There's switchbacks. There's you got your motorcycle guys. You got people dressed up as a devil. You got idiots running in their underpants. You got all sorts of things going on. It's sensory overload. Plus, you got a bike race going on. How tough is that to to navigate? Oh, I mean, some of the you're really not scared for yourself. You're scared for the spectators. Yes. Because they are totally oblivious to what's really going on outside of their their vision. Right. And I remember on a motorcycle, I forget what year it was, but we were passing the Peloton on the left side, which is where you have to pass. Right. And a lady was holding a baby, and the part of the front part of the Peloton went by, and she turned to watch it, and we're coming up on her, and they were gone. So she turned, and when she turned, she swung the baby right out in front of the motorcycle. The mirror on the motorcycle missed the baby's head by that much. The driver, JJ, flipped it over. <laughs> I mean, we've had, you know, yeah, you're riding that. close. I, I, one year, Richard Veronk yes. came up behind me. I was shooting shooting backwards and standing on the back, and he came up and tied my shoelaces to the luggage rack on the motorcycle, and the whole front line of the Peloton <laughs> thought that was great fun because that was trapped there. So yes. it, was a, it was one of those parts of the stages where nothing's happening, but they, they have fun on that. But it is. The worst part about the, on the motorcycles were the descents. Oh, yeah. I mean, Especially on the, narrow the, roads. The, the cyclists are just going twice as fast as you are. They're flying by. You're just trying to keep the bike up right. That's, uh, so. Uh, so with Atlantic City, uh, that's a f- the first event in the U.S., and you guys were filming there. Will that air? Will yes, that it's, it, yeah. it's going to air uh, in the States sometime around the first or second week in August. Okay. And... Um, the it's it's going to be on the NBC the family banner, of networks. family of networks. Okay. So we cool. will uh, watch the um, Atlantic City website and probably on the Challenge website we'll have when the when the date is firm. But it's in the first either August 9th, August 12th, somewhere right. around there. Now people watch the, the you know, Challenge Roth online and they they watch the, the people going up Solar Hill and. Uh, but you're talking about this year about potentially putting a TV show on in the States? Yeah, we're looking at the possibility of syndicating it in across the United States, which would put it in a lot of markets, including <clears> – it's very complicated. Sure. I, it's, it would be in NBC in some areas. It would be in CBS. Yeah, it's it would syndicate, be a, yeah. a syndication. Yep. Yeah, not – not under the network's banner, right. but under the affiliate banner, yes. and then it would play in other local markets, and it would play yes. multiple times. It's a, it's a bigger way of exposing, and I think better to get the name out there that way. I think Xterra used that philosophy, they where they would do CBS and says some markets, they might be on all three networks. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, I love that. So for race day, where will you be, and what will you be doing here in, in Roth? Uh, I'm not <laughs> quite sure. <laughs> Um, I will probably be close to where Command Central is. Um, they're shooting a movie here this year, so right. I'm kind of keeping my eye out and liaising, liaison with them so to make sure that they're taken care of and everybody's working out well. So that's uh, Love that. That probably more intense there than I am on TV because the TV almost at this point takes care of itself. Sure. Uh, well, getting inducted into the Iron Man Hall of Fame last year, what, what did that mean to you? It was amazing. It was a total surprise, number yeah. one. I was, um, Andrew Messick called me up. and yeah. well, Actually, it was Diana Birch called me up yes. and said that Andrew and she had talked about it, and Andrew suggested that I go into the Hall of Fame, and it's fantastic. It was just, you know, <clears throat> the furthest I've ever run is 5K, <laughs> and that was last October. <laughs> 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 so, I mean, I would not, it definitely wasn't going to get in there on my athletic prowess, but uh, as far as, you know, I love the I love triathlon. I loved Ironman. I love Ironman. It's a great event. I uh, I just was very honored that someone would consider me and doing just the television sure. guy to um, to be there. And um, I still thank them. There was it was an amazing thing. How many years have you been in? T- I know you were a, a, what six, seven, eight years old when you were making making films for your dad, and now it's. <laughs> A few years later. A few years later. A few years later. So you've been in production, uh, involved with TV and film for how long? 
if you talk about if I started with my dad, yeah. I was I was six years old. I'm 72 now, so you do the math. This whole <laughs> break. Don't do, we don't do math. We're in media. If we did math, we, we, we'd, we'd have to get a real job. Yeah. I really didn't start, I, I, you know, from the age of six, I've been connected to the business. I really didn't start working and getting paid until right. I was in high school, and I painted sets and did all that stuff, and then um, got into the business in... Um, Seriously, in about 1964, 65. So you're one of the rare guys. You've, you've covered the Iditarod. You've covered the Tour de France. You've covered the Ironman. Uh, how many Olympics have you oh, been at? Oh, God, I, I can't even remember going back to Munich. Started the first one was Munich. 72. 72, the, you know, Montreal. I think I did every summer Olympics that ABC had it. Right. And all the winter Olympics that ABC had it. And then I did a couple after that for CBS and... Turner yes. and uh, whoever was covering it. So I, mean, I, I was supposed to do um, Sydney in 2000. Yes. And I was down there doing the whole bit, and I got the call from Iron Man. <clears throat> oh, that's when you got the call from Iron Man. So I uh, having a tractor race. There. Yeah, I know, yeah. But, um, yeah, I got the call from Iron Man, and um, so the, the timing conflicts. So I, I, that's the last I didn't last do Olympics. Sydney. Yeah, I didn't do Sydney. 72 so. through 96. Yeah. That's Love that. Well, Peter, it's great to still have you in the sport and still influencing television. I've, I've always felt that in terms of growing the sport, there hasn't been a bigger influence than that NBC slash ABC television show for trial for Ironman. Well, you know, it's, it's, it just shows you used properly how television can work with an event yeah. and help build it. I mean, it, you know, thank God for the first people at ABC yes. and capturing the, the Judy Moss crawl and yeah. the whole number and every triathlete in the world should thank Julie Moss. <laughs> exactly, she put the sport on the map, no and, question. And and uh, and then the ABC recognizing that, flying them to New York, putting them on the air, doing like, making the show air about a month before it was scheduled to air. They did it the next week. I mean that I'm not sure that would happen today. I think that it was the visionaries in TV at ABC in 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 you know. 79, right. 80, 81. Knowing start, what they had. Knowing they had what they had yeah, and yeah. run with it. Everything's too programmed now. Oh, we can't interrupt that. Right. We can't do this. So that's a... Uh, How does the internet affect all this? I mean, we, <coughs> television is still so vital. And I think a lot of people feel, well, you know, we can, we can grab eyeballs and do everything online and we don't have to worry about production quality. We can, we can lessen production quality and, and still get good numbers. How important is does television still remain? Uh, as far as a... Um, iconic way to go. Uh -huh. it, sponsors, uh, events love to say we're on NBC right. or we're on ABC yeah, or CBS. Yep. It has that uh, curb appeal. Sure. Um, sponsors like to, you know, if you're going to be on um, Fox Sports Net or, or In the, the internet, the, yeah, yeah. you know, Ford or whoever or whatever the sponsor isn't going to come up with the amount of money they will pay so that they're on. Right. Yeah. Um, quality on TV, I still think, is better than the internet simply because the signals are mixed. Usually mm -hmm. the money isn't there to support the production. So right. it's kind of like there are some great things. Don't get sure. me wrong. There are some moments captured on the internet that you don't see on, on TV. And, but I think used properly, they can work together. They can play off each other yeah. and, and, and make it a whole instead of two separate entities. Love it. Peter, thanks for taking time. Yeah. Always a pleasure to catch up, Iron Man Hall of Famer. Yeah. So um, <laughs> now I really feel old. <laughs> <laughs> Peter Henning has been our guest. Again, we are brought to you by Nitro and Flapjack. My name is Bob Abbott. You are watching Breakfast from Roth and Rainer. We'll take us out.